It's been a, super hot and we've got all these shade structures set up. So let's see if they're actually making a difference. So we've actually replanted a garden. We put a shade structure up and we've actually had to add one over here as well to the bees. So there's a whole lot going on, but um, yeah, we're gonna do the unscientific way of seeing if the shade actually helps plant. As of right now, we've got three beds with shade structure and then the bees have shade over them for right now too. And it's been crazy hot. All of these plants are fall plants that we planted and it's been the other day, I think two days ago, it was 90, somewhere between 95 and 97 degrees. And this morning I actually woke up and it was 67. So we're getting a little bit of a reprieve, it's supposed to be about 87 degrees. And then we're gonna go back up again. So we're now getting into yo-yo season. We're just getting started. So we're gonna see highs in the 90s and then 80s, 90s, 80s, and it'll be probably, if I had to guess, 90 70s 90 70s so it start going like this so we're trying to mitigate this issue but we're going to look at each bed and kind of see what's going on underneath the shade and see if we can tell a difference the cabbage which is just starting to get sunlight the back rows actually seem to be doing fairly well um in the afternoon the sun comes from this direction he in and we actually can't get shade in the front so let's walk over and see what's going on there and just see if you can really tell what's going on. Now this was uh, about planted a week later. So we lost one and we've got another one on its way out. So that tells me, but if you look in the next row, all of them are growing. We actually do have some pest pressure, so we're going to need to treat for that. But otherwise you can clearly see the difference there. So that's a harder one. Like I get through the jungle. That's a harder hit bed. And then if we come over here, this is where the sweet potatoes were. And we pulled the sweet potatoes and then we immediately came in and planted the broccoli because the broccoli was just ready to get into the ground. And we can actually see where that is indeed the case. So we're gonna take a peek at this one and see if we can tell a difference. And I've actually been doing something different with this bed to try and mitigate this a little bit. What we can see is that they are growing in the back rows and these pretty much say shaded, I'd say 95% of the day. Now, when we come up to these two front rows, this is where we start to see the issue. So this still stay pretty shaded. We lost one, we're losing another. This one looks a little crispy, but it may be okay. Crispy, crispy, a little bit crispier than I want. Fine, okay, and dead. So you can see that there's clearly effects from the sun. Now, if we come over here to this Brussels sprout bed, let's see how it's doing. And it basically stays shaded all day. Now these have been in the ground significantly longer. So it's been a little bit more of a uh, reprieve for them but at the same time what i've been worried about is i'm trying to fix the shade the wind's blowing it off is the lack of sun that it's getting and there's a little bit of an issue there so without further ado let's look at our brussels sprouts which is the big question here come underneath everything seems to be doing very well here um they're still small we definitely are getting some pest pressure so we'll be putting some bt on this tonight there you go there's our culprit. So we'll put some BT on this this afternoon and feed it and it'll come back. But the difference with this bed is not only do we have this shade cloth on here, but these tomatoes are going crazy right now and they're falling over. And what they're causing is a full shade issue right here. So we may have to do an adjustment. But what I think I'm gonna do, and this is super important, is I'm gonna come out here this afternoon and I'm gonna look and see how the sun's hitting the bed when the sun's coming from this direction. And if it stays mostly shaded, I could very well remove the shade cloth and just take it off for the rest of the year for the most part. Now, Saturday or Sunday, one of the two, it's going to be 95 degrees again. 
So we may leave it on there because it's a couple days off just to be safe. But then after that, if the forecast looks like it's gonna come down, there's a good possibility that we could just go ahead and remove this completely. Now we do have this other bed and this bed has no shade at all added to it. It's getting shade from the trees and stuff like that. And this is where we have our rutabagas. And I did something a little unorthodox, which is not uncommon for me to do, but um, I tried to make things stretch a little bit farther than maybe I should have. What I did in this bed is when I seeded it, I had clumps, like massive clumps of Brussels sprouts. And you can see, I mean, they're just now getting going. And so what I did is I came out and I would take the clumps and I broke them apart. And then I replanted them throughout. So this whole row right here, which we're gonna inspect in a second, was just replanted from other clumps, which I was okay with. I wanted to try it out, see if they would do, because rutabagas don't like to be replanted. And I mean, I was very, very gentle, but you can see we do have rutabagas, not rutabagas, but the seedlings are in fact growing. So we have a full bed of rutabaga. You may be asking, why wouldn't I shade this bed? And I, sh I could shade it, and maybe I should have shaded it, but it gets a lot of shade this time of day. I mean, right now, because the sun's getting lower, we're in the shade mostly back here in the morning. So it's not getting as hot. And with the limited amount of sun that it gets, I don't want to impede that sun with a shade cloth and slow that growth down. So I have to make sure that I'm watering a lot. And this is really important. So all of these beds, so of the five beds here, there's four beds that have been replanted. On the hottest part of the day, what I'll do is I'll come out to this tomato bed and I'll cut the water off to it. And I water all of the other beds with in-ground watering for roughly about 15, 20 minutes. I'll just put on the drip system, let it drip out and cool those roots down a little bit. And then I'll try and come out and just give it a little bit light watering on top to cool the leaves down. And as you can see, we've kind of had a little bit of an issue with the front rows of these things where it gets the most sun, but we've also got some more that we can replant. So it's not the end of the world. And we also went ahead and put them in pretty heavy. So if I get gaps, I'm not overly concerned about it because that'll just leave room for other things, the, you know, the other broccolis or cabbages and stuff like that to grow more. So I definitely have to say that the shade helps dramatically with this kind of stuff. I mean, all of these plants, if you put them out here in 95 degree heat, straight up, even as seedlings, First of all, they're gonna burn up. And then second of all, once they start getting hold, they could very well go to bolt. Now we don't know how it's gonna go, but because of the way that the, the temperatures are starting to come down a bit, we're starting to get a few more days of cooler weather and the nights are cooling off. That means that they're getting a reprieve. They're able to soak up more water. There's not as much evaporation going on. Now those 95 degree days, you come out here and the soil is dry. But until then, it's not. Now, we do need to come out here and mulch this rutabaga bed, but I wanna make sure that everything's kind of taking hold and that I can easily see the rutabagas before I start, because the last thing I need to do is just throw mulch right on top of them. This newest shade that I've added, which was just an emergency setup situation for the bees happened the other day. Um, I went into the hive and this is the blue hive. So the bottom box is all bees, brood, eggs, and stuff like that. And the top box is mostly nectar and food for next year. And then this one, the top one is the honey super, and they're just building that out. But the comb actually melted in that. So when I took it out, it looked fine. I set it down. Within 10 minutes, it had totally melted and started to collapse. So I put it out there. I put the shade over it cooled it down. I've been trying to keep it cool. I went out there today and it actually hardened it up more and got to where it was in a little bit better. So that allows me to believe that the shade's actually helping with that too, which is crazy because you think about it and you're like, well, it's not that much cooler, but it must be just enough for plants and bees and all these other things to kind of keep them a little bit cooler. So I'm a big fan of using the shade. These shade cloths that I've added, once I got my sheet and I cut it to the size that it, I needed it to be, the setup was only five minutes. And 
And like this one right here has been the most headache because it takes the brunt of the weather. But for the most part, it hasn't been that bad. And what I want to do is get a little bit sturdier stick and put an actual padding on top so it can kind of rest a little bit better. And that'll keep it on. But you can see that it's clearly made a difference inside of my garden and we're just going to have to replant. So we're going to coast through this next 95 degree day that we've got coming up. And then we're probably going to drop some plants in. But in the meantime, I'm going to try and save what I've got and just see. I mean, I'm not going to let anything go to waste. And it's been a big headache right now, but in the long run, when it's all said and done, it's going to be OK, because once the temperatures start cooling, then these plants are going to start to thrive. So my goal is to get them situated now, get them comfortable in the ground, and then when they start coming back and the temperature starts cooling, they can be ready to grow. So at this point, all the fertilizer is starting to break down, except for in the broccoli bed, still giving a little bit of time. Um, the weather is gonna get hot. When it cools down again, it looks like we're gonna have a couple day stretch. I'm gonna shoot it with some more, I'm gonna inject it with some fertilizer just to give a little bit of a boost. And then that should last me until that fertilizer that I put my pre-planting holes that I do will start to break down. So all of this is starting to come in. Now the mulch has been invaluable too. So you've got to think, not only have we got the shade, and we've got the mulch, and then we've also got the water hitting it. So we're cooling it in three different ways. And that's really important. So it's eye-opening to me to see the unscientific way. You know, no temperature, no thermometers, no hydrometers, nothing like that. Just looking at it, now I know that in the front row, I can expect some dieback. And then in the future, I can account for that and then make a difference with that knowing, here's the key, knowing which way the sun hits my garden is at what time is gonna tell me at what point I need to start shading it and how to adjust my shades so that it can get the proper amount of sunlight. So on those back rows, I probably don't need to shade it as much and I can re-angle my shade cloths in the right direction so that when it comes in the morning, in the afternoon from that direction, it hits the front of the bed that those front beds get more shade and I should be in a lot better shape. So it's been a learning process this year and I'm happy with the, with the progress. I mean, as of right now, my fall garden, the majority of it is planted a month earlier than normal. And it's all because of $10 worth of shade cloth and some bamboo stakes and a little bit of twine. Goodbye.